Today we're going to install the LED signal light kit on the Gen 5 2024 MXZ850. Want to clear up a couple things on comments from the last video. Why do you need LED signal lights? These aren't turn signals like a car has. It's not to indicate right turn, left turn, that kind of thing. This signal light kit replaces the hand signal. So it allows for riders to be safer on the trails because they don't have to put their hands off the handlebars. You know, you're driving down the trail and you see the one, the two, or the, you know, the signal for more riders behind you, or the closed fist down or, or out to the side that means you're the last one in the group. You don't need to do that anymore. You can leave your hands on the bar and you just set the signal light amber if you're in the middle of the pack or green if you're at the back of the pack it means it's green to go so very very safe and we like using them so that clears up that part of the uh the signal -like thing so looking forward to seeing all these on the trail i think i said that in the last video so let's get right to the install I've got the number one lead ski LED handguard installer with me today. None other than Mudbrat's ambassador, Drew. How you doing, Drew? Thanks for coming back home to help me out put these on. Let's get to it. So do I drop the handguards now or? T20, my T25. She even knows all the tools that you need. A lot so. more room to Yeah, it is to work. nicely laid out. Really loving the Gen 5. Can you go in my toolbox and grab my metal tray? Yeah. Thank you, assistant. This is a, a, a quarter inch drive. It's a shots. It's a family it's a quarter inch. Okay, first hand guards off the machine. You gonna do one at a time or? Yeah, let's, let's, we can just do one at a time. Same as the handlebar retainer. It's a, <laughs> I don't That's know. Right word. Handlebar retainer for the hand guard. It's another T25. You watch, Skidoo's gonna call that in the instructions retainer next year. So once you got, so the handlebar retainer was a T25, and then the screws that's, uh, that's on the inside of your handguard, it's gonna be a T20. We're in handle in that box, I just prefer using the ratchet, that's all. Let a man have his way. It was a bit of a, actually this one seems like it's gonna come off, but it was, you pick it, and then it just slides forward. So you kind of pull up on this side here lightly. You'll see it kind of pops out because it just has, this is just receded yeah. into your handguard. You pull it, pops out, that comes off, and then that slides off because you do kind of need to have it apart for this next uh, one. So they come like this, little bag. It's got a little cable tie on the, the cable. And I'll say it again, I said in the last video, the wiring is a lot thicker than the previous series of LED. They're just plain white headlight handlebar LED kits. They're, uh, it's quite a bit thicker and better quality. I really like the way that they've done this and the style and finish of that bracket is awesome. And you interchangeable just, with any of your handguard caps. You got the red, yellow, orange, green. Yeah, if your sled has colored caps, you can use the, retain the, the colored cap, which is pretty cool. You slide, there's a little tab here on this end and then it clicks in over here. So you kind of slide it in Avoiding the cable or the wire, of course. You slide it in on uh, on that side like that. It does require a little bit of maneuvering to snap it in because it does need a little bit of pressure. Pressure. So you see, it's almost in, but you just got to get it under that tab. See that? Just a little bit of thumb pressure right on the corner. They pop right in. It's a really good design. I do I do like that with the handguard caps. So. Good on them. Oh, it's actually, hold on. I didn't actually get all the way in because there's, sorry, let me go back to that. So there's, it will clip here, here, and here, and just slides in under there. So there's one more clip. So just there. And you'll see it's nice and flush to the, the handguard signal. All the way around. Nice. Cool. Here's, let's figure out this wire now. Totally. So where, where we were thinking on the Gen 4 that it wasn't honed out enough, it's the same way on this. That, that hole looks, looks bigger. bigger. That, that actually is. looks bigger. Yeah, that definitely is bigger so, here. We honed that out on the Gen 4. That is actually big enough, I think, for the wire to pass through. The way you route it through is that the cap for it that has the light now 
goes on the front. It goes kind of in, it goes right through here where this first gap is. And there's a little tiny hole yep. on the back side that you stick it on through and then it goes under and they have just a, a Yeah, that's the hole right ahead of my finger there. Yeah, just right, it's kind of as yeah. soon as it meets so the bar. So put it back together, it's hard to see, it's all black. Try this, actually that does look better. I, I, could, I could see that's better. Okay, let's try this. Well, then we just have to get it under that. So yeah. we pull it out slightly. Yeah. What we did on the Gen 4 one to make this easier is we actually pulled this out so there's more room for the wire. We're just gonna get the wire to sit in its little recess there. And also they have on the wire, speaking of how the quality of the wire is, if you look right there, they've actually put strength points on every single spot that when you assemble it is a pinch point. We're gonna pull it out slightly so we can get that in. Who's who's producing this anyways? Oh, Francis Ford Count Chocula. So there's a little um, there's a little guide area that this wire falls into on the uh, inside of the handguard, but it doesn't clip in. It just they're just kind of retention hooks. I wish it would snap in there, but it doesn't. I'm gonna run that like this and then set that. Again, just like we took it off, there's a little clip there that slides in like so. And once that's in place, I'm gonna actually pry open the, get in there. It'd be hard to shoot it because it's so. It's actually, you almost got it in, don't you? I know, it was clipped in there. There it goes. I'm kind of wiggling the screwdriver as I go and it's popping into place. A little bit more down, there you go. That's good. So, see it started. There we go, it's in. Okay, so we got the wire in place and now there's a little aluminum spacer that we're gonna drop into the handguard. Preston. It just fits in there like that. Okay, and that just keeps that from going too far, I think. So I'll make sure that wire's following along those guides, and then we'll pop that clip in like that. You that doesn't it? fit tighter in the front. Look no. at mine. No, look at I said that on mine. How crappy no. the, Sorry, I mean it didn't fit. How? I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it fits any better. No, no, I don't think so either. Can you grab me the handle for the Torx? Okay, so the screw that came out from the back of the handguard here before was this guy here. In the kit, you're going to get two long. You're going to get longer ones for each side because now it's a further distance. So you'll see. The old versus the new. Old, new is the longer one. So that's uh. So put the old ones in your spare screw jar. jar. Obviously be gentle with it because you don't want to. Is that the right one? Yep, go for it, put it on the seat. And actually as I was doing that, you can actually see the gap's already closed. So nice. if it feels like it's not fitting well, it's just because they kind of all have to mate. So it's good and tight, I think. In the same bag, you're gonna get four smaller screws. And these are to put the cover on the bottom because you're gonna wrap the, the wiring through to the bars on there. I need a small Phillips. Okay. So you're gonna have to route your wiring through the bottom of the can guard here. It and clips this. onto that inside of that clip. It clips on the inside of that. It does, it, it clips on the uh, the inside of this, the cover. It's a little tricky to to get it lined up. It's even trickier to show on camera here because I kind of have to grab a, ah. Uh, I don't remember where that goes though. Does that just it, sit it against goes, there? Yeah, it just goes up and that comes out from behind it. Okay. That tab. So kind of get it in place first and then just line up the wire along it.
like most things, it only goes one way. So get it lined up, get your screws. These are Phillips. And a very small Phillips at that. There. They kind of do click in, per se, but it, they just, they'll find their home, as, as most of these do accessories do. Okay, so that's done. Let's install it back on the handlebar. So line it up. The, uh, they have like these markings on your bar. Little stock marking points. Just line up the center of your, uh, line up the, the holes on the line. I don't know how else to say it. And then you can just make your adjustments however you need to. Make sure that these are always tightened evenly. That's all good. We're gonna check the angle on it. Set it. We can tweak it up later. But yeah, pretty Very much cool. like that. I'm gonna leave it a little loose for now so then when we get the other one off and on. Yeah. I just wanted to get it roughly in the, in the position that it was so that it's not as hard to get it back to where the comfort zone is. And we're just gonna leave the wires hanging there. We're gonna manage those once we get the electrical put in and it's tested. All right, so let's get this other one off. Let's do it. Um, this is my new technique so I don't drop it. Yes, under. good idea. Cradle it. Cradle it, love. They do like to fall on the floor. All right, just like that. Okay, back to the T20 on the back screw. And to show the other side, what I did on the other side again, pull up there, slide it out. We are ready to roll on getting the other one out of the packaging. Are you okay? You're going faster than the other sled. I think we just had more to drink that night. <laughs> Likely. I'm at zero right now. As we showed in the other one that has the little clips. They're not really clips. They're more of a... They're a guide They're for the guide, wire, for yeah. the, the wire to get pinched in and evidently rip. Oh, actually, that's right. There we go. So we're just gonna kind of sit it in the- It's like a barb. The devil's pitch, devil's pitchfork stand here. Or a Karen. Here. Yeah. You know what I think? I do think that the cables where this reinforcement is, it lines up perfect on the Gen 5. The Gen 4, it did not. Heck no. Have you started this? One? It's like it's all broke, like where they punch the yeah, hole. Yeah, it's in like it, it's, it's like busted. it's not even a machine. I don't even think that's a machine no. that does that. I think that's someone by hand with a yeah. punch with a hole punch. Pedro. No, it's 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 Quebec, so it's basically just someone. No, I think in Mexico. Regardless of the. Isn't it Mexico they're made? No, these things are built in Falcor. Oh, sorry, it is Pierre. <laughs> it's Pierre or Jacques. Did you see the? Um, VRP has a whole page where they just post about just like their innovations or whatever, and they had a little video from inside the factory. The machines move around the factory on robots. Oh yeah, yeah. Operate, no, no operations. That's cool. They drive around to the stations. So what will happen is I saw it. There was a. a I'd love free to see ride. it. There was a free ride and two renegades coming up on the tri on these king robot things driving behind each other. Yeah. You know what came up next to it? A rack with hoods in order numbered with the same corresponding number as the robot. Oh my God. With the hood to put on the machine. And then it moved on to the gauge and it moved on to the, like it was kind of cool. I think you'd be floored by what Toyota in those places looked like too. Oh, it was when I was home to fix my car. There, that's done. That'd be neat to see. Where are we here? Oh, dude, you're missing something. Do that. So we're gonna snap that in. We're gonna slide it in, right to the side. Yeah, we're gonna slide it in, ain't never gonna stop. And then we click it down, 
right to the back. Slide it in, slide it in, and again slide it. We just forgot to put that cap on, rookie mistake. We didn't promise to be a professional. The opinions expressed on this channel are those of the of the idiots running it, not the advertisers. Okay, and the longer screw. And Preston. It just fits in there like that. We didn't show that one on the other side, we forgot to. We were, we were playing around with this part too much. He won the money. Okay, so we're gonna just get the little thingy here. You're gonna put the little thingy on, then you're gonna put it all together. And most tutorial videos would go just like that and the machine would be finished. The tab goes to the wards, the bars. Can I tell you what the issue is with that flap? That flap is the same flap that they, was included in the old LED kits with the thinner wires. Oh, so, and I the like it. I'm saying this, people watching, is that it should go flush, and it's very tough to make it go flush with the the thicker wire guard arm. It's almost like they didn't change the clips either. <laughs> they didn't. It's the it's exact part from the old setup. Make sure that it looks like it's not pinching the wire because you don't want that. You want to make sure it's hugging the wire. So right there, you'll see that it will be nice and flush. Looks so we got to, now that this both screws are on, make sure that they're tight. So this process again. The dirt bike, the signal light. So we're just going to eyeball it for now. Tight enough that it's not going to be moving around. And loose enough that if you hit your head off, it'll we move can, out of the way. We can tighten them when we do the final assembly. All right. Okay, now the fun part. We're going to remove the hood on this thing. Phew, I've never done it before. This is fun. All right. <laughs> got it. Look who got it off first. The guy that doesn't own the machine. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's not like the Gen 4s where it's all the way open. It's on a slight angle and they'll pull off. We can see your 137 decimals I got for your tunnel. Ooh. Copied these, but I put the fur on it. <laughs> Should've got okay, the so that's bottom it. jeans and the boots with the fur. This, this, snap, oh, snap back. Are they push, are they push? Do you push down those little triangles, Dad? No, I think it pushed back. It doesn't push watch back, my video. it goes into the, it can't push back because it's going into these wires. It doesn't go back. Maybe it comes forward. One of these. It's on there. It goes. Little, it's on little clips. You just pull it up. Can you straighten? Turn the handlebars the other way. There we go. There's two screws there. Excuse me. And again, down here, right yep, next we can to see it. it. Actually, it's a lot easier on this side to get your hands in there. So there's a little screw, it's a little clamp on the air box, it's just there. Just loosen it. Good. Back. Now unclip it. There we go. And there's your hood. So we got to drill the top here to put the button in. We're going to make some room by taking out the stock accessory daisy chain. Just like that. So then we're just going to kick that off to the side. And we're going to measure this with a caliper. So we got the gap on the bottom. We're going to make sure that we have it all nice and centered on top. We'll make a little template. We'll use a knife. We'll cut it up. And uh, get this switch put in. If you feel up in underneath here, you can feel the plastic edge, this piece. Then you can feel this ridge. And then it drops up in. And there's a little thin channel about the width of a switch. And I want to make sure that we get in the middle of that because I think if you miss that opportunity, you're pretty much ski rude. So I'm just going to push, put some masking tape down to 
so we can just draw right on it. Probably I'm going to angle it so it's in the same area as the as the uh, link thing, so it's got some nice symmetry there. And from the edge to the back, we've got 113 millimeters. That's from the tip to there. So the tip's here, and we got 113 millimeters. Feel up underneath here. I want to make sure that's zeroed out. <laughs> Red Bull explosion. And we're going to bring this over. I'm just going to go on the inside of that thing to the lip. 33 millimeters from here to in there. Oh, fuck. Oh, that's good. That kind of works. Okay. That's good. And we're going to double check all these two. So I'm going to go in here and I want to measure to the back wall. 70.3 to the inside of that. So okay. a little tip it in just a bit. It looks like it's about here. And I want to measure the width. Of, okay, move that out of the way. Now I want to measure the width of that gap that's under there. There's not a printable template online, is there? Remember, we looked. You have to buy the. Remember, you have to buy the yeah. console that has the template built in. You just punch out the holes, which is cool, but I don't know why it's not factory. Looks like you're a little. Twenty-six point seven. I know it's gonna be twenty-two, but that is that totally confirms that that is where the channel is. So, if I take this, it looks like it's just on the inside of that line. If you look at my tape, right there. And that would be about right, because that is probably the, the connecting piece that connects this part to that part. For the sake of video. For the sake of this video, the light needs to be, it's 21.6, so 22 millimeters wide. And then we're going to measure from when we squeeze these clips in, what the width is. And we got 44.2, 44.1, so it's 22 by 44. I'm going to go like that, 22 like that, and then we're going to go 44. And we had our template from the last machine, which we made and cut out. So I'm just going to sketch this onto the panel. Through the hole in my template, and I just want to stand above and make sure that it looks like it's straight. The last thing you'd want to do is have a crooked a crooked switch. So I'm going to go in the bottom corner here and I just want to see where we're at. Again, don't push the drill right through because I'm not sure what's... I can feel that there's nothing underneath there. Oh, Drew, that's absolutely perfect. Yep. I can actually see my finger up in there. Another thing so too if I do is this. moving this, ac this accessory wire came around exactly where you're drilling, so that's why you should take the accessory wire So now we got the four corners drilled. We're just going to cut along the, the tape. Just gently. It's going to scribe into the plastic. There's one. And now we've got it scribed. We can peel the tape off. You know what I mean? Okay. I think it's time to do the turn and burn. And then I'm going to heat the hmm. knife blade up. It's there. Are you in focus? It's auto. That's one cut already. Keep a fire going, will ya? SP versus XCR, okay. When you're heating the blade up, they'll be, it cuts so easy. Just be very careful that you don't pass those drill holes because you will make a mess of your dash. I was thinking that, they, that I've seen people do stuff like this routing yeah. into plastic. I'm, I'm going to be interested on Sunday to see how many people have lights. Yeah, it will. Be it cool looks like a lot of it looks like a lot of people are buying them for their their Polaris's and their. So everyone's like, "Ooh, it's a 600 in the middle." Mm -hmm. All right, nice. There we go. I'm just going to tuck a shop towel underneath here to catch any debris that falls in, and then it, it'll it won't go in underneath the you know it won't fall in underneath there. 
What's it say there? 21.2. 20.4. Yeah, so we gotta go wider. About the torch again? Oh, uh, 22.6, so we're good. Yeah, you wanna check the length ways now? 44 or over. And be careful working around here because that stuff scratches really easy. 43.5. So we're really close. Make sure you put this in upright. And now we got the hole to the right size. It's going to be a little tight at first to put it in. And then once you get it, just push her down. And we're good. Woo! Man, we do good work, Drew. Not done yet. You got, you, you've done half a job and got a full smile. What did you pull out of here? The accessory. I, you want me to show you where I tucked it out of the way? What's so the I showed it on here? video. No, that's not anything. That's a spare one too, though. Oh, man, 100 by 100 shot. He didn't. Anyone looking to, has one looking to adopt an adult? Everybody has a garage. Even Jinxie the other day said it's not big enough. It's true. Okay. Okay, so when I when I showed before, I just tucked it up over here to keep it right out of the way. Like I actually shoved it in the gauge wire, so I kept it right out of the way. And I was gonna put that back in its stock's point. This is the, the the accessory daisy chain, as I call it, where you can hook all your accessories in. So let's get the, the wiring harness out for it, because we but we like to do this process that first. One for? That's another one. There's another spare plug right there. So can we plug right into it? Because remember that, okay, so let's, let's. So we're gonna unplug the three prong, which is that one from the post. Okay, in like that, and we'll tidy it up once we have it all in place. So now you gotta plug, the, these go to the hand guards, which we'll get to, and then this is what goes to the, the switch. switch. When the switch is in the machine, facing in the correct direction goes like this. They are to the inside. They're closest to the handlebar. So it's going to sit like that up in. Okay, well, honestly, this is easier than the Gen 4. There's actually more room up under. So we're just going to line up the metal contacts. Hold the button from the top. So now we're going to have to plug in the two hand guards and move out. Hmm. No. Uh, so we're just going to cut the zip ties that are holding the the sheaves around the wires coming from the throttle the heaters and the handlebar warmers on the passenger side on the passenger side on the uh control bar side the brake side they give you new zip ties to to do this there we go and then we're going to open up these sheaves See that? And we're gonna drop this this wire into it. So it's gonna open up somewhere here and we're gonna drop the wire into it and run it along. It's coming out here, the wire. So we're gonna just put it into the sheave right about where it's coming out and then we'll, we'll throw a zip tie on there. Sure to get that wire in? Yeah, this wire's already in. I'm just gonna put everything back together the way it was around the uh, the heated thumb and the kill switch. That just keeps it from opening up again. And then we're gonna go here. So this is where it's terminating out of the uh, Did I undo all the zip ties there or no? No. I got enough of them, I think. There's though. one up here. Is there one more down there? Right yeah, at the very right top, there's one. Okay. Do you need to get the one at the top maybe though? Mm -hmm. uh, no, because I think it, the, that's a mistake I made on the other side is it starts later. Okay. You know, one thing I hope they fixed was this. Hope that they made the button on the inside they stronger. Uh, rule of thumb, I'm gonna follow is not use it while I'm riding. Mm -hmm. Oh. I think that's the thing when you're shaking up and down and you use that you're gauge thing. You're putting excess pressure on exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> that might Talk be. about losing a 10 mil in your engine bay. Try losing a whole pair of uh, side cutters down there. Oh, 
Well, that's pretty cool. They give you a red Brembo sticker on the brake ones on okay, these. You can really see it. That's the new bigger brake on it. Yeah, it's it? a four piston. That's beautiful. Yeah. This thing is a thing of beauty. The whole sled. Dude, okay. this this brake lever is the cat. So though, this man. was like zip tied down here somewhere. That doesn't need on the wiring side of things. If you think that you're gonna mess up because the left hand guard, the left hand guard and the right hand guard do have different functions because only the left guard, the one that's facing the oncoming trail traffic, is the one that does the colors. If you think you're gonna mess it up, don't worry. Skidoo had that in mind, as these are male and female connectors reversed, so you, you can't mess it up because they only go into one of the plugs, if you get what I'm talking about. Make sure it's good and plugged in, nice and, nice and toy. Get in there. Giggity. A lot of more room in here than the Gen 4. That is very true. Holy. Because they moved the gauge wire out of the way though, right? Yeah. Headlights and your gauge is now one connector at the very top there, which is super nice. So they did give you plenty of zip ties. That's pretty There's cool. even a spare one too. Here. Big dog. What are you doing? They even curled Big them cat. so that when you're Feed them in, they actually wrap around so you can actually reach them. Feed. Yes. That's pretty cool. Nice. Nice. Ding. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, we gotta test it. Did you bring my key out? Is that it? Is it working? That's not. Yeah, it's oh. All right, now that they're all ready, we uh, fired the machine, tested them out, all the modes work, they're perfectly functional. Uh, all we gotta do now, slap the hood back on, and this thing's done. Awesome. Good job, Drew, you did an awesome job again. Everything's back together, it's time to slide that hood back on. Yeah, this is really simple compared to the Gen 4. It's, all the plugs are on top, so uh, once you get this thing started to slide on, the, uh, the headlight and gauge is all in one. It's still exact same clip form that the old one have, and you just slide it in like that once you get these clipped in. That's in now. Just make sure that all the flaps are, are secure like that, and then these clips at the front are, are actually in place. Okay. Plug in all your headlights and everything else, your gauge. There's just two plugs for the gauge and all the accessories right up top. Clip. There. there you go. Just got these little clips, so just go. This dude does it right. I'm telling you. There we go. Perfect. This isn't in right. Look. What do you mean? Is that gap always gap. been yeah. there? Really? Yeah, it's like a race car gap. See. No there. way. Yep. Okay. I kid you not. Oh yeah, my kids are when it's on the slide. Boom. All right, for the lights now. Even had time to put on the shield saver. Just turn Let it on. Go. Okay. This is your standard mode. You turn the machine on. They're in running mode essentially. Just the nice LEDs like what everyone sees. But like color mode. It goes to um, sled behind, basically caution behind. So when someone's coming at you, they'll see this, and they know that there's more sleds or something there. One more click is for the last rider in the group. This signifies that there's, it's clear behind. Obviously, you proceed with caution to still though. And then one more setting is the blinker functionality. Hazards. Yeah, hazards. Which will be good if you maybe had, some, had a buddy go off the trail or you need to park your sled up ahead, you put the hazards on it, let people know. And then one more click of hazards, puts it back uh, into running mode. Pretty cool. I like them.